How long are you going to ignore Masa Amini Iran? Uh, I'm not. I don't know why you have this like accusatory tone. Like, do people think I have like a stake in this? Like I have a dog in this or something? Every single person that has brought this up so far in the chat has done it to in, in the weirdest way possible where they're like, dude, like you think Iranian people rising up against police brutality as a consequence of the morality police is going to, uh, you know, not be up my alley. Like, what, what do you what do you mean? Like, you think I'm uh, weirdly in support of like uh, Iranian police brutality? Is that the implication? I'm not pro or anti hijab. I'm pro freedom. If you want to choose to wear the hijab, you should be able to do so without the government telling you you can't, especially in Western nations. And if you don't want to wear it in a country where it is literally something you have to do, then I'm pro not wearing it if you don't want to. That's crazy. But people have been freaking out about it. I only know brief details. I'm not entirely familiar, partially because, you know, the platform that I've been on and love and have uh, built my community on has been on fucking fire for like the past week. So, you know, it's kind of been a kind of been a thing. I know that this is probably going to be a controversial person to cover the story on, but I'm going to look at what she has to say anyway. My normal fun fact videos today, but I've gotten a lot of comments and DMs in the past 24 hours asking me to talk about this, and I feel like it's a situation that needs to be addressed. So, Iran's morality police recently picked up a 22-year-old woman off the streets for violating their compulsory veiling laws, aka the hijab laws. Her name is Masa Amini, and agents told her brother, who they took her away from, that she would be released in an hour after taking a hijab class to be convinced and educated, but that didn't happen. Her family found her in the hospital, in a coma pronounced brain dead. Police beat this woman to death over a dress code. These morality police are known to harass women, okay? Slapping them, beating them with batons, dragging them by their hair, forcing them into vans, and then running over family members who try to fight and get their loved ones back. A lot of- Okay, um, here it is. Why Iranian women are burning their hijabs after the death of Masa Amini. Uh, Iranian women are burning their hijabs and cutting, out, cutting their hair short in protest over the death of Masa Amini, a young woman who died after being arrested in Tehran by Iran's notorious morality police who enforce the country's rules on hijabs and other conservative Islamic modes of dress and behavior. Notice how this NPR article says conservative Islamic modes of dress and behavior. For those of you who think like the entirety of the Islamic world is on board with everything that like anyone has ever done, notice how the word conservative plays a role in here because things like the morality police or people who are fundamentalist Islamists these people are conservatives. They're like the, the white evangelical Protestants and the psychotic like uh, Christian weirdos in America, but in a country where they have even more power and even more control. Uh, part of the reason why these extremists have, these extreme conservatives, extreme right-wingers have more control in countries like this is directly a consequence of America's intervention in said countries. Iran is a, you can literally put a, a direct line into how uh, Iran turned into this theocratic nightmare, as a matter of fact, uh, when uh, the, the socialist uh, leadership wanted to nationalize its oil uh, uh, refineries and its, um, oil extra its extraction industry in general, but it was owned by British Petroleum at the time, and America and, and the UK directly interfered, okay, facilitated a coup d'etat, and in the aftermath of said uh, coup d'etat, of course, the most extreme, most hyper-nationalist, and most fundamentalist uh, anti-American uh, elements in the country overtook and were uh, and have been in power ever since. So, but that's besides the point, okay? That's what happens when you kill all the socialists in a country, but that's besides the point. So here's what we know so far about Amini's death and the public fear it ignited and the questions that remain. Amini was arrested for allegedly breaking the hijab rules in a... And countries like this, there are, uh, you know, morality police and hijab rules. I personally think it's completely and fundamentally unacceptable. I don't know why. Bro, you just call Christians psychotic? No, I said psychotic Christians, like hyper right-wing psycho Christians. Like, you know, ones that are like, you can't have an abortion. Like, you should die if you have a, uh, if you have a, a stillborn uh, thing inside of you. Like, you should just fucking die from internal bleeding. Like, I'm talking about those guys. Those guys are psychotic. You know, or do you think that that's not a, a psychotic person? Not every Christian is like this, obviously. I've never had a, uh, an, an, you know, catch-all 
monolithic understanding of how people uh, consider religion to be. That's not just Catholics. That's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, it's mostly evangelical Protestants. White evangelical Protestants are significantly more anti-abortion uh, than the broader Catholic religion, even though Catholics are pretty fucking anti-abortion as well. As a matter of fact, the, the most prominent Catholic voice in the country, Paul Weirich, realized that evangelical Christians, white evangelical Christians, were significantly more racist than the Catholics themselves as a broader majority and could politically mobilize them. And that's precisely why we even have this like anti-abortion movement in the country to begin with. Learn your American history before you just fucking cast the blame on you know, Catholics or, or one group or another, okay? The y'all kind of boys are the white evangelical Protestant Christians. So, where were we? I am not an r slash Reddit atheist who's like, I just hate all religion or whatever. I understand that it could be a tool for, you know, guidance for some people. Everyone believes in dumb shit. A lot of people still believe in capitalism, so it doesn't even fucking matter. But also on top of that, we know the psycho Christians are, uh, we know there are psycho Christians though, aren't, aren't both extremes wrong? My friend, I'm going to say this to you one time. I knew you were going to do this. I am saying that the fundamentalist extremist right-wing Muslims are, of course, in the fucking wrong. But you, guided by whatever your precognitive biases were, literally are not hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth as I am covering this story. Why are you in here if you don't want to hear my feedback? If you're just going to fucking jerk yourself off about the preconceived notions that you had of me, then you don't have to be in here. The only reason why I would bring up Yal Qaeda or the psychotic fucking Christian evangelicals, as a matter of fact, is so that people in here in America understand that Islam, just like Christianity, is not fucking monolithic. Because I am talking to a Western audience. I am talking to English speakers primarily. And American speakers need to understand with examples from their own fucking backyard. That's why I'm doing it. Anyway. Thank you for conceding, though. At least you didn't continue down the fucking brain rot, as I suspected you might. Amini was arrested for allegedly breaking hijab rules. Okay, she died at the age of 22 uh, in northern Tehran. She had been arrested on Tuesday and reportedly was taken to a hospital shortly afterwards. She suffered multiple blows to the head before she died, according to the London-based broadcaster Iran International. Amini was arrested in her brother's car. During a visit to see family members in the capital, the outlet reported she was originally from Sakkas in the Kurdistan province. They beat her to death in custody. You know anything about, uh, you know, police brutality? You understand that, uh, you know, this is a, a universal principle, okay? Made only worse by the authoritarian theocratic regime in Iran. Does not change the reality that, like, America's actions against Iran are completely and wholeheartedly, utterly unacceptable. Um, denuclearization agreements should have been followed through on. Uh, Iran does not deserve the sanctions because those sorts of sanctions are just collective punishment, which is otherwise a war crime, but not when America does it. Those people that are suffering are doubly suffering as a consequence of our actions in the international stage. However, that's not the main point here. Let's continue. Amini's family says officers beat her in the police van after her arrest, citing eyewitnesses who supported the claim. Police are, of course, rejecting the allegations. If you, like I said, if you know anything about police brutality, you already know. Uh, we investigated ourselves and decided that there was no wrongdoing. Saying Amini died after being taken to a hospital because she had a heart attack. Even then, it would still be your fault if you are uh, the one who beat her so hard that she would have had a heart attack. But that's not even what happened. They concussed her and she, she was uh, brain dead. Senior officials are promising a full investigation, including President Ebrahim Raisi, who called Amini's family on Sunday to assure them her death would be investigated. Your daughter is like my own daughter, and I feel that this incident happened to one of my loved ones, he said. Iran's Chief Justice Mohseni Eje has also promised a full investigation. The United Nations called for an impartial inquiry into Amini's death. Masa Amini's tragic death and allegations of torture and ill treatment must be promptly, impartially, and effectively investigated by an independent, competent authority that ensures, in particular, that her family has access to justice and truth. A lot of posturing from the Western world here. It's, it's, they are on the right side, but also remember that the same Western authorities that would say we need an impartial third-party investigator uh, had a, sure had a hard time when talking about the, the unjustifiable war crime and the execution of uh, a famous Palestinian uh, journalist uh, in a raid that the IDF was conducting in one of the camps. 
So, break clip of your position on religion. Okay, liberation theology is an example of good religion. And the justification for slavery, also found uh, within Christian doctrine, is an example of bad religion. Okay, it's just a tool. But some of you guys are incredibly sheltered and refuse to That's recognize right. that, like, a big chunk of the fucking planet still have these ideas and they're not as inherently hostile towards them as you are and if you want to build like an internationalist perspective an internationalist movement or if you want to be more understanding of others and empathize with the with the way that they've grown up you have to also allow them to believe that you don't believe in as long as they are not hurting solidarity as long as they're not using their religious beliefs to personally turn around and abuse uh, marginalized people further there you go a photo of Amini lying comatose in a hospital is the heart of the rallying cry for Iranians who want more freedoms and rights for women. Yes, the, uh, the, the, the story I was referencing with respect to the occupying force was the Abu Akhlek story. The Abu Akhlek family has sub uh, submitted a formal complaint calling on the international community to investigate the murder of Shireen Abu Akhlek. Uh, remember uh, the, the uh, Israeli uh, propaganda immediately coming after saying that her, her death was not in the hands of an Israeli sniper who purposely, knowing full well that she was a journalist, as was indicated by her gear at the time, shot and killed her through her helmet, shooting her directly in the neck. The government has pointed to its own images to prove Amini wasn't beaten in custody shortly after her death. Iranian police released release surveillance camera footage part of her arrest. The video shows the woman suddenly collapsing on a chair while she was talking by a female police in the police station. Uh, yeah, after they beat her. Um, this is Iran's George Floyd moment. British Iranian actor Omid Djalili said in a video posted online, drawing a parallel between demonstrators who want the change in Iran and Americans who call for police reforms after Floyd's death in custody. Um, there's social media movement around it as well. And women are now burning their hijabs in protest in, in their demonstrations. They're, they've been demonstrating for nearly a week with some women setting their headscarves on fire in the streets. Video shared by BBC lead presenter Rana Rahimpour shows women standing on top of burning police cars rallying against the Islamic Republic. One question is whether this will stay as a hijab protest or mushroom into a larger anti-government movement. At least seven people are reported to have been killed since the protest began throughout Iran, according to the BBC. And from what I understand, they have blackouts. They have uh, uh, they've done blackouts on, on uh, the internet as well every now and then. So yeah, the government cut out uh, the internet completely and it's killing people in the streets yeah that's what i've heard as well ig and whatsapp are currently down in iran and uh yeah um this is already an anti-government movement yeah of course what fuck iran keep in mind that this is national pentagon radio it doesn't matter yes uh i'm sure that the american state department will use any opportunity it can to destabilize iran as best as they can but ultimately this is once again a legitimate movement of people who are not happy with a insanely oppressive, insanely oppressive uh, uh, regime that is authoritarian and, and, and fundamentalist right-wing religious. In 2019, an Iranian woman named Sahar Kodayari was dressed up as a man to sneak into the stadium and watch a men's soccer match. When the 29-year-old was arrested by the police, she learned she could spend six months in jail and Kodayari set herself on fire in protest and died. And the incident sparked outrage in the country and beyond over the strict rules and consequences for breaking those rules that women in Iran face every day. Gender-based violence against women, including so-called honor killings, continues in Iran. The country's laws do little to protect them, experts say. In a tweet in response to Amini's death, Robert Malley, the U.S. Special Envoy for Iran, called on the country to increase protections for women from the country that is, you know, allowing millions of women to no longer have access to abortion, which can end up in a deadly way for them whether because they got a back alley abortion or because they, uh, you know, had a, a pregnancy complication and could no longer get the adequate medical treatment. Uh, you know, we are doing that. Just saying, we everybody has different ways of fucking over women. Just remember that. Can you get an abortion in Iran? Yes, but that doesn't make them better uh, in terms of women. Do not misunderstand me. It's not only the hijab. People are tired of the dictatorship and getting treated like garbage. I think part of that is the economic destabilization that America has has put on top of Iran, for the record. It's just overall economic instability, volatility caused by that. The government takes actions that are uh, more strict than usual in times like this. And here we are. 